Okay, so it is just me, myself, I, well, and Dark Angel today. However, she's playing some Grand Theft Auto V, so she's just going to be kind of sort of right next to me hi. as we, she says hi, don't know if she's picked up or not, but this means we are... Right here on Spreaker. Yes, that's right. Spreaker. Later to be cast to YouTube, so you guys can check out the replay there if you just so happen to miss it over here. Um, but we have a fun one for you guys because Hell in a Cell was quite the thing, uh, was it not? It was definitely something else. And, you know, ironically... Probably one of WWE's strongest, if not their strongest, pay-per-view of the year. That's right. You heard it there. Um, I can't. I st I, I'm still in complete and utter shock. I was actually going to go live immediately after, but uh, some interference from the team kind of sort of kept that from happening. So I opted out to get some rest to come at you guys a little bit before Raw tonight. Uh, to kind of play off of that and give you guys a little bit of a, uh, to give you guys a little bit of, uh, food for thought, I guess you could say. But as we try to get everybody to come join, we're gonna sh get right to it, get right to the <laughs> gun points of the uh, pay-per-view. So, uh, probably WWE's strongest uh, main roster pay-per-view, we're not counting not counting NXT here, main roster, probably their strongest main roster pay-per-view of the year, if not the strongest main roster pay-per-view of the year. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Uh, however, still not on quite the level that All In was, or that they were close. They have a little bit of ways to go. As you can tell, our overall show grade is, I believe, a B or a B plus or something like that. Um, I kind of believe it to be around a B or B plus. Um, but you know, it's for good reason. Uh, I'm a little bit more. Uh, I try to observe a little bit more in depth as to what's going on. So as far as my grade analysis go. It's a little bit more in depth. I would like to believe, anyways. It could just be, be me being nice. I don't know, but <laughs> uh, very, very uh, fun stuff. And we're gonna go. We're gonna start at the kick, uh, pre uh, show or the kickoff, however they want to call it. And we're gonna go all the way up to the main event. Um, but I do have to talk about that opener. On the main card, uh, because that is one of my heavy talking points. My God. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. But first, before we get right to the review, advertisements are indeed a key. If you have not followed us on Spreaker.com slash user slash Firestar Heart, please do so, and you will catch that shit live. Excuse my uh, French there. If you want to uh, check us out on YouTube, you can do that by subscribing to youtube.com slash firestarheart. Get all that. If you want to check out the live gameplays on Twitch, check out twitch.tv slash firestarheart. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can go at firestarheart. I mean, I mean, come on. I'm everywhere as firestarheart. You'll probably find me. He's not kidding. Uh, no joke. <laughs> and if you want to uh, support the channel... Support the Spreaker. Help us grow um, and be able to bring more content more frequently at a better rate for you guys. Then uh, definitely consider donating to Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash FirestarHeartCRW. Uh, or if you want to go through PayPal, if that's more comfortable for you, you can. 
paypal.me slash firestarheart. Um, it's whatever you're comfortable with for as little as you can and however much you want to do or how much you want to do it at a time. Or if you would like to help out at a great deal, get yourself some official Firestar Heart merchandise, you can go to teespring.com slash stores slash Firestar dash heart. That will be a, a tremendous effort, and you'll have yourself some memorabilia you can wear around. Uh, our shop is ever expanding. We are working on some more expansions now when uh, live streams aren't a thing. But hey, WWE barely takes any time off, and guess what? That means we barely get any time off ourselves uh, unless we just decide to skip out on a week. But when we're, we're building up right now, so we're kind of trying not to. And uh, maybe that may cause for me to even, you know, do a few things by myself, which I am all right for. And I'm pretty sure you guys would love to hear Firestar's voice for an ongoing amount of time anyway. So, let's get right to it with all that stuff out of the way. We kicked off um, the pre-show match with uh, the New Day having a little... Sing off with uh, Aiden English. That was that was a great little ditty. That was that was fun. It, it got me a chuckle. Uh, and then they went on to have a great match. Um, the New Day wins. Uh, the New Day retains. But I believe Rusev Day will get another opportunity and win it back. But you know, a nice start for the. Nice start for the event. <laughs> and now we get to the main card. I just had to look at Dark Angel. She just did something on GTA, and it was something to go, no, no, no. You uh, silently take out. Guys, silently take out. So we kick off Hell in a Cell on the main card with Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. Oh, this match. This match. So awesome. So great. But godly, it hurt. It hurt to it was it, it was definitely a match that hurt to watch. Because <clears throat> let me just give you my best JR voice. <clears throat> By God! Screwdriver! Jeff Hardy's ear just got screwed by Randy Orton. In uh, almost a literal sense, Randy Orton takes a screwdriver to Jeff Hardy's ear. What? Oh my god, my ear hurt just watching that. And I'm thinking Dark Angel, she curled up in her... She like... She clenched in her seat, almost spilled her nachos uh, that we were eating while watching uh, the pay-per-view. A uh, ton of bumps. ton of bumps in this match. It was even a bloody bout. Like, there was blood coming from Randy Orton's uh, thigh, I believe it was. Had a chunk. He had some skin hanging out there. My God. These men beat each other up really, really bad. Um, and then comes the end. Uh, neither a Swanton Bomb nor an RKO put this match away. Jeff Hardy almost kills himself. He damn near kills himself. Hanging off the ceiling of the cell, and he plops face first, nobody home, through a table. And Randy Orton's like, yo, yo, this match needs to end. He goes over for the pin. Just, I mean, the match itself, yes, great, A+, plus, uh, absolutely amazing, but Jesus Christ, Jeff. My God, man. Oh, my God, dude. Dude, I was wondering that. Like, Jeff Hardy has made a career of damn near killing himself. And this match was no different. And for his first ever Hell in a Cell match, he made sure he brought it for the crowd. And uh, just hoping Jeff Hardy makes a, a recovery and is able to, and is okay. Um, we did get the hospital update on him later on in, that, in the night saying he had some uh, bleeding going on and he was bleeding from the mouth and stuff like that. So, yes, uh, definitely, um, he, he definitely hurt himself really bad. And, but Orton didn't come out unscathed. Uh, he posted up on his Instagram, the, the 
welts on his back from being smacked and all that stuff, man. Uh, there was a sweet song. Uh, there was a sweet swan time spot with a. Uh, or uh, Orton having the chair on his chest and Jeff Hardy hit the swan time. That was good. Um, but man, just what a way. What a way to kick off Hell in a Cell. Having Jeff Hardy almost kill himself for our entertainment. Jeff, I sincerely hope you're okay, man. That match gets an A+. And for me, that was match of the night. There, There was almost no way to top that. And it was a good mood setter because, uh, good mood setter and actually, actually a good opener as well because they knew they were going to have to die the crowd down just a hair. Now, um, we get an AJ Styles promo next up. That was, you know, an alright promo. Uh, and then we go into our second match of the night, which was a SmackDown Live Women's Championship. Charlotte defending against Becky Lynch. And Becky Lynch gets the win. My God. Uh, I don't know how many people were expecting that. But that is the right call to make. Becky Lynch is your new and two-time SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Uh, Becky won after a nice counter. I believe she she countered the spear like uh, into kind of like a float over maybe DDT style pin. But it, it was enough to it was enough to pin Charlotte. And then Charlotte goes to uh, extend the olive branch uh, with the handshake after the match, and Becky's like, no, 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 you're not taking my spotlight ever again. And walks away, Stone Cold Becky style. And so, uh, you know, that is an A+, plus, uh, on my end as well, or an A, or, you know, however I, ga- I gave that. But awesome stuff to see um, Becky Lynch finally win the title. The New Day uh, was spotted back there uh, celebrating after the uh, their match, after that match uh, as well. They were celebrating their victory. And then Kofi Kingston came to interview him in his uh, Kramer disguise. That was funny. Uh, <laughs> that was a funny little bit. New Day's always funny. Then we get uh, S- uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose from The Shield. Versus Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, a.k.a. the Dogs of War. They are your current tag team champions uh, heading into this match. And they actually retained uh, after a high-impact match. This match was a pretty damn high-impact match. And for a tag team match, this got an A-plus for me as well. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, They had an amazing sequence going throughout. You know, plenty of good tag team warfare. Uh, Drew McIntyre even had a kip-up moment. So that was even amazing. I was absolutely ecstatic to see that. Big old Drew, man. Getting it done. And uh, the sweet ending sequence that we had. uh, Ambrose actually gets to tag to uh, Seth Rollins. And then Rollins goes for that uh, suplex Falcon Arrow combo that he likes to do off the top rope. And as he's going over for the Falcon Arrow for that, that little float over sequence, here comes Drew from out of nowhere. Boom! Boom! Claymore kick. There you go. Claymore kick. Firing that last shot, and Ziggler falls on top of uh, Rollins for the pin. Absolutely amazing tag team match. But uh, we keep it going. They actually keep the momentum going here with uh, once we get to uh, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. And... Uh, let me just take a moment to say that that bedtime story that Samoa Joe gave. <laughs> oh my god. There's a reason that Joe has managed to create golden memes out of this. Uh, it's absolutely hilarious and absolutely funny. Uh, but... The match was awesome, uh, but it had a bit of controversy surrounding it. The ending saw Samoa Joe managed to tap out AJ. However, AJ was uh, like, uh, you know how they do those reverse choke uh, submission style rollovers when they uh, have the balance and they got the, or their opponent held down. 
Uh, so Styles had him held down, but Styles tapped it too, though the ref did not see it and counted Joe's shoulders to the mat for the three. Joe thought he won. Joe thought he won, but uh, he did not, and he was very, very pissed off uh, after that, and Paige ended up uh, telling him he will get a rematch. I believe it's going to be at Super Showdown. So, uh, that is going on there. That is also going to probably be an amazing match. And probably, unless they have plans for AJ Styles to beat CM Punk's record as WWE Champion, it's probably going to be when Joe gets it. Might be anyways. I'm thinking it, but I'm not going to make a prediction on that. Because it would be real bold. I'm just going to watch it and see what happens. Um, then we get the Miz and Maurice uh, doing an interview to hype up their match uh, that's coming up next. And then uh, it goes into, it, it's a decent match. It's Daniel Bryan and the Miz are, are good performers, great performers even. But it wasn't going to balance out Brie Bella and Maurice. Their wrestling abilities aren't A-plus material. Uh, hardly even B-plus material sometimes. Uh, so this match was decent at best. Uh, C plus. This was actually the downer of the night, uh, for the most part, as far as um, straight up matches go. And then uh, we go to the semi main event, which is uh, Ronda Rousey uh, with Natalia versus Alexa Bliss, and she was accompanied by Mickey James and Alicia Fox, or <coughs> Alicia Fox, um, for the Raw Women's Championship. The match. Um, People feel like it should have been a squash. I really don't feel like Ronda should always squash opponents. She's in the WWE now. We get that she's an MMA fighter. But there's also the lines of competition. Brock Lesnar sometimes doesn't like to follow that. But seeing Brock have competition within the WWE, or at least made to look like he has competition in WWE, actually brings out some good stuff. So, I don't agree with constant squashes. I do not agree with constant squashes. I'll put that out there right now that I do not agree with that. So, uh, you know, there was a, there was a, you know, a pretty good competitive match there. Nothing more than a B or a B plus. Uh, but Ronda is a, a great seller as well. Selling the rib injuries and doesn't even have the tape. She was trying to warrior it out tonight. And hide the injury, though she could not because she uh, felt the sting and she sold it great. Good stuff. But she gets to win with the arm bar, managing to submit Alexa Bliss. Um, then the main event with Mick Foley as the special guest referee. Roman Reigns is the universal champion, defending against Braun Strowman inside Hell in a Cell. Now, I don't even need to check the notes or anything for this. I'm just going to be a straight shooter with you. All right, simmer down now, crowd. Simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. Yeah, there we go. I know, I know, the applause. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Firestar Hard. I'll be here all damn night. All damn day, every single fucking day. Because I am the Omega Saint, and that's what I do, baby! I go over. I get over, and I stay over. We're over the mountain. But enough of uh, cracking that promo style. Um, this match, the reason I give it an A is because of the chaotic action that took place. Not saying the match result itself was an A, I could not rate the match. I had to rate the action. That's where this comes in for me. Uh, and the action itself was an A. There was plenty of chaos with uh, the shield and the dogs of war. Um, Ambrose and McIntyre took each other out on top of the cell. And here goes our woohoo, somebody's falling off the cell moment of the night when... Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler go off the side of the cell through the announce tables. 
This is after Roman Reigns had taken Braun Strowman out by going through a table in the ring, so there was another table spot right there, and they're just, you know, they're sleeping, waiting for the next thing to happen. And, uh, well, <laughs> amidst all this chaos, here comes the pain. Here comes the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. By God, he's got a beard and he's pissed. Not, he does not pull a cane. He doesn't rip the, he doesn't use his arms to rip the cell off the hinges. No, he kicks this motherfucker in. Excuse my French again. He literally kicks this fucker in, okay? And Brock Lesnar proceeds to lay waste to both Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. So it doesn't appear Brock Lesnar's going anywhere anytime soon and could be competing, or, well, at least immediately anyways. And this appears that Brock Lesnar could be appearing at at least the major events like pay-per-views and such. We can only hope. But it looks like Brock Lesnar's definitely, you know, a little bit more motivated. Because he appeared at the pay-per-view right after SummerSlam. He appears at Hell in a Cell to lay both of them out. Mick Foley, his spot was actually just getting maced by Paul Heyman. Wow. Okay. So, uh, with that in mind, and uh, everything that went down, I gave the chaos that ensued an A. The match itself was a no contest, which bring, which does bring the overall move down a bit. Uh, this is true. Because, how often do you see a Hell in a Cell match in like that? I mean, the ref could have at least counted to ten. But I'm pretty sure Brock Lesnar's presence pretty much just scared the ref. Yeah, you, you know, what? call it, call it, and that's what they need. That's what they need to do anyway. However, they feed into it from here uh, on out. We'll we'll see if they can play off to have the advantage in there. Uh, so uh, the overall show grade is a is a B. Good, good fun, good good effort by WWE. Close, but not close enough. Um, they're getting there. Unless they decide to... Unless they end up backtracking. So, we'll, we'll just find out. We'll see what's up. We'll see what's good in their neighborhood. Uh, and that was hell in a cell. Roman Reigns ends up retaining because of this, yes. So, Roman Reigns is still your Universal Champion. Braun Strowman's cash-in is a failure. And, you know, it... This this occurs to me that maybe Braun Strowman shouldn't have won Money in the Bank. People felt that Braun shouldn't have won Money in the Bank in the first place. I kind of sort of feel like that. Because all he really got out of it was a gimmick and a t-shirt. Mr. Monster in the Bank. Somebody could have really benefited from being the Money in the Bank holder. And Braun Strowman was somebody that could have just cashed in a, the I'm the big monster guy ticket to get his title shot. Didn't even need the briefcase, but they built. They decided to build this storyline around the briefcase and the cash-in, getting a universal title back on programming and stuff like that. So, you know, what's done is done. Uh, but with that being said, that's pretty much Hell in a Cell in a nutshell, folks. And Raw comes on in about an hour from uh, post time now, about an hour and five minutes. So, we're going to get ready for that. And uh, just enjoy some time. And we'll be back next time with a podcast episode. I'm considering uh, doing end week stuff. I don't know how the style I want to do it yet. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens in that camp. But until then, we're going to keep bringing the podcast to you any way we can. And try to sprinkle in more content in between that. Now, the reason why I say do an end week episode is so we have some time to fit in uh, gameplay uploads and streams and stuff like that. So with that in mind, um, it's something to consider, but we're not making the change just yet. So I will do my best to keep bringing you podcasts and uh, streams and stuff like that. I still have to get things exported over to YouTube, so stay tuned for that. I'll be working on that at some point. Um... Potentially when I get some free time. And uh, yeah, folks, just stay tuned and keep it up. Join the Saints Nation today by subscribing to us. 
Spreaker, YouTube, wherever. Until next time, folks. <laughs> Goodbye and good night. Bang! See you guys next time.